And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I'm very excited to take a look at the second in the Millennium series for Chronicles of Crime. So Chronicles of Crime, very popular game in which you solve cases by using your phone or your smart pad uh, to scan different cards and solve a puzzle, a dynamic, interesting puzzle. It had a, a couple expansions to it, and then they came out with this Millennium series. So I've already looked at the first one, 1400. This is the second one, 1900. Um, and then there's one that's coming out in the f that's going to be set in the future. I was really excited about 1900. I find this period of, of history interesting, the turn of the century, technology coming into play. So I was pretty pumped about that, and I really like Chronicles of Crime anyway. Now, if you've never heard of Chronicles of Crime before, don't worry. I'm going to explain the game here and how it plays. You don't need the other games to play this one. It's by itself. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to try to show this to you with a minimum of spoilers, although you may see some stuff that is in the tutorial. To play the game, you're going to need the Chronicles of Crime app, and you will play the 1900, where there is a tutorial captured in the frame, and the two scenarios, the boulevards of death. You can play them one after the other. And then there will be more things. You can see there's another one added, a ray of hope. So once you play the scenario, so let's say you play the tutorial, uh, this says resume, and I'll I'm playing the last one, so I'll start a new one. The tutorial walks you through everything. It explains how to play, and so I'm not going to show much more of the tutorial. I'm just going to talk about how the game plays. Now, what's going to happen is you are a newspaper uh, journalist in the year 1900, and you're going to run into three people in every scenario, to the point where these first two people, maybe they move around, but I don't know why, for example, this, is, um, this, is, this lady here helps with puzzles. And I don't know why she's just not printed on the card, uh, rather than, I mean, she's always there. And this is the newspaper editor, you know, the guy who's always yelling at you. And this is your uncle, who's a police detective, who, for some reason, always asks his nephew or niece journalist for help. And then there's going to be various other people that you meet throughout the journey. What's going to happen in a scenario is you're going to, something will happen at the beginning. It will tell you what, it will usually give you a location. So maybe it says location A at the Moulin Rouge and there's a uh, dead body there and your uncle's there and he's w talking to a witness there. So it might say something like that. So you'll go to that area, you'll scan, it, you'll scan the QR code and it will tell you what's there. Many times you'll talk to different people who are here. Now. You might think in your head, well, to scan everything. Yes, but as time goes by, the scanning goes up to this huge uh, plethora of options, and every time you scan something, it takes time. Once you scan somebody, you talk to that person. So let's say you scan your uncle and you talk to them. You then can ask your uncle questions about her, about him, about him, about him. You know, you can ask questions about everyone you meet, and the combinations are going to go up. But at one or two spaces, you know, locations, you will also have the opportunity to look at stuff. When that happens, you're going to press on the search the scene. And now you can play with 3D glasses or not. So let's say you're not playing with them. You're going to give the device to one person. And that person's going to be able to look around the room. You can move the, the thing physically or you can spin this. And you're just looking around at clues. It's just a big picture, a 3D picture of clues. And you're telling everyone else what you see. And then you're going to pull items out of a deck of cards here. So maybe I see a flammable object. Maybe I'll see food. All these different items. And you'll scan each of these items. And if it is a clue, it will tell you. Maybe a decorative item, there's a weird candlestick. And it'll say, you found a weird candlestick. Put this in your clue section. Or maybe they'll say, well, the, the, there's a missing shirt. So you don't actually have the clue, but you'll put it here because it's something to talk about. And then each person you run into, you can scan about these items too and ask them about different items. Now, all this also includes dynamic stuff. You might go to a location, says your uncle's left and he's gone to another. And there are various locations that you'll be told about, and all these are double-sided. You'll be able to go to the different locations and meet all sorts of people. And at some point, you're going to go back and solve the case. 
Now, what's different in 1900, which is different than other ones, is there are these puzzle cards. So these are very specific for a scenario. Again, I'm going to quick br show you briefly the stuff that's in a tutorial, but like this one here, which shows Morse code, and then this necklace here. I'm not going to explain what they mean, but you'll find them, and they are like a puzzle. They're like an exit room style puzzle, an escape room game. If you go back and talk to the puzzle lady at the main office, she can give you clues and even solve them outright, although you'll lose points at the end. Eventually, you go back to here and say, solve the case. It will ask you some questions. You answer those questions correctly or incorrectly. It gives you a score based on how many questions you got right, and then it tells you what actually happened in the case. And then that's it. That's how you play. So the app is a big part of this game. The app works really smoothly. I tend to like to use a phone over like my iPad because it's just easier to pick up and scan things. I found that the scanning worked pretty well. There's sound effects at the different locations. So that I like that. The locations themselves I think are really cool. They show different parts of Paris. This is I think the best. The artwork is really cool. And you go to these different spots. I'm less impressed with the actual people in the game. Uh, they all look very similar. This is something that Chronicles of the Crime has been criticized for in the past, and they did not really change much here. There's a very, I mean, yes, they have different facial expressions and stuff, but I was mixing people up, and there, there's a, a slight lack of, I think, I'm, I don't know, I just, they don't look very diverse, the different group of characters. And a, a character could be, you know, she could be a murderer in one, a victim in the next, a servant in the next, and a rich lady in the next one. You know, it, it has all, you know, they move around and do different things. But I kind of wish that these were better. The game also comes with that big deck of, of item cards. It has a smaller deck of item cards here. Uh, that could be used for various things, who knows what. The puzzle cards, there are, how many of these are there? There's 20 of them. I have not seen all the puzzle cards. I'm assuming some are from the future uh, it, scenarios. But I do wonder if that limits 1900 to these puzzle cards. Because with the other Chronicles of Crimes games, you can just keep downloading more stuff, right? You can just keep... You can download new scenarios. Well, the new scenarios won't have puzzle cards unless you somehow can buy them. So that may be a thing, although I think you can just play a game without the puzzle cards in the 1900 setting. So um, there you go. That's the components for the game. They work fine. I do like, I will say, one thing I'm really happy with this, as with the last one, 1600, it all comes contained. You don't need Chronicles of Crime to play. You just need this box and the app. Now, I want to say, first of all, I really love Chronicles of Crime, and I really love this, and there's lots of cool things about this that are great. But I will say, I was slightly disappointed by the whole 1900 aspect of it, because the 1900 aspect here, I don't know, I, I, it's my own fault, I guess I had build up of like, ooh, Pulp Fiction, the 1900s, you know, the turn of the century, exciting things, vistas and stuff. No, it's just 1900 Parisian stuff, and, and that's fine, you know, there's, it's interesting, but it's, it's almost... I don't know that there's a, it didn't feel like there was a whole lot of difference between this and 1600 theme wise. In fact, they deliberately referenced the 1600 and that's because at some point there, I know there's a scenario coming that will tie all three together and you'll jump through all three timelines. Not, not a big deal. And, and the, and the storylines are still interesting and things are going on. It's just that I didn't think that the setting, like the, I, I didn't see a whole lot of difference between the setting with 1900 and 1600. Now, that being said, I still love the game. I still think it's fun. I'm getting better at the game because I've seen enough TV shows and movies and stuff. Sometimes someone will say something, I'll be like, they're the murderer, you know, straight up. Because they did this, 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 and then I'm kind of extrapolating just from the way things happen. And I, but that's fun. It's still an interesting thing. Fun to hunt down stuff. Um, they, they, there's a little bit of talk about technology in the turn of the century, but... You know, this just figuring out it's a good old-fashioned murder case or robbery or whatever it might be. Now, they, they, there does need to be some more cases. It's starting with three cases is not a lot, but if it's like the other ones, there'll be more and you can download them. And you can also go online and get user-created scenarios that will come out as time goes by, too. The difference between this one and the other ones is the puzzle aspect here, right? They're, they're, they're jumping into that escape room in a box thing. Hey, there's a puzzle card. Figure this out. Turn it sideways. Here's a secret code. You put these two cards together. Look at them backwards. Yada, yada, yada. 
that works. I like it. But like I said in the component overview, it just worries me that you won't be able to just download another scenario where you're going to get the card from, the puzzle card for it. But again, if that might not bother you, you might just want to play in this setting and move around Paris. I mean, while I said that the setting isn't totally intriguing, I do like the Paris locale. That's fun to go to the different spots there. So all that being said, I still really love this. I think it works really well as a single or, or two people. Three people is about the max I'll play with this. You're sitting there. You're talking together. This is a great game for me and my wife to play as we just sit there and we talk about who we think did it. Sometimes we both look at each other and be like, that's the murderer. You know, it's just, it's fun. It's entertaining. Sometimes we're wrong. Um, and, it, it, and because it's dynamic, because you go to a location and someone who was there moved to a different location or they shut their shop down or because of something you asked them won't talk to you anymore or they're dead, you know, and you're like, oh, we should have asked some more questions while they were still alive. All that works together. If you like Chronicles of Crime, you'll also like this one. I don't know that this is the one I would recommend you start with. I think you should get normal Chronicles of Crime, the original one first. But if you're looking for a different setting, and if you like the puzzle room aspect of it, then this will be the one, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. See you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!